Well, good morning, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. So today, as promised, we are going to make a very simple bread, a homemade French bread. So because I've heated my water, <laughs> I'm gonna get right into the bread baking, and then we'll come back and chat a little bit. This video is actually a response to The Needy Homesteader, so this is not my recipe. I will leave a link to her video um, and her channel down in the description box. If you all have not visited her channel, it's a treat. She is an exceptional, exceptional bread baker, canner, just, just lovely. So you don't want to miss out. So let me swing you down and we'll get started. <clears throat> so in my faithful KitchenAid mixer, I'm going to start with two cups of warm water. Now y'all know my house is freezing cold. So I actually had to heat it in the microwave and you want your water between 105 and 115 to best activate that yeast and it's two cups so we're going to start there and because my bowl is cold and i keep my yeast in the freezer so my yeast is also very cold i usually go up to 115. now what if you don't have a digital thermometer you can just make it to be a nice warm baby bottle to this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of SAF yeast or instant yeast. I keep mine in a jar in the freezer. And we're also going to add to that, oh dear, a tablespoon of sugar. I'm not sure which is sugar and salt. That's the sugar. Alrighty. So I'm gonna let that just kind of hang out. Probably not the proper way to stir it with a knife. Um, just trying to give that yeast a chance to kind of bloom and start becoming active. So you don't want to get your water too hot because it will kill your yeast. But I'm telling you, this recipe is so versatile and it's very foolproof in that if you just follow the simple directions, it takes regular all-purpose flour so you don't even have to have special flour. Even if you don't think you're a bread baker, you will when you finish this recipe. Another thing to remember, when you layer ingredients for bread making, there is an order. So you do your water with your sugar and your yeast. Let that hang out a minute. Now to that, we are going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm just using classic olive oil because that's what I had on hand instead of extra virgin. And now we're going to add our flour. So we're going to form a barrier, if you will, between the yeast and the salt that we are going to add last. And you may be like, well, why? If there's salt in bread, why are you doing that? Well, sometimes salt can deactivate or slow down your yeast. So you want to keep them separated in the bowl until you start mixing. So this recipe calls for between four to five cups of flour. So you want to start with four cups. We'll mix it, let it come, put our salt in, mix it, let it come together. And then we will make a decision how much extra flour we need to add. I've made this recipe several times. I'll also share how you can turn this into a baguette. And I always need at least five cups of flour and sometimes more. So it can depend. Each time you make bread, it may be a little bit different. <clears throat> it can depend on the temperature in your house. Cold. The humidity in your house. Low. So I'm using half cup measures because it fits in my canister the best. So let me count here. That's one half. One. And you just want to scoop up your flour level it off and this is an important part of bread baking one and a half so is counting two <laughs> two and a half sorry i know this is the boring part three three and a half and four. So you don't want to compact your flour in the cup. You just want to loosely put it in there, level it off. Okay. <clears throat> now 
Let me show you in the bowl here. I'm going to lift you up. You can't even see the liquid. We're going to put our salt right on top. That's two teaspoons. And I'll go through the recipe again in a moment because I know I'm kind of rushing here. We're going to raise our bowl. I'm going to bring this together. You've all seen a mixer run round and round, so I am going to pause you for just a moment until it has a chance to come together and then show you how to evaluate your dough and how to know how much flour to add. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is where we are with four cups of flour. You can see it's a very, very soft dough and definitely will need to tap in some more flour. I have a soft voice. I will try to speak up so y'all can hear what I'm saying. So I am gonna measure what I add in just to help you all out. But again, you need to pay attention to your own dough because it can be different each and every time you make it. So I'm gonna just turn the mixer on like a one and I'm gonna start tapping in flour a couple tablespoons at a time. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for that dough to come together and clean off, if you will, the sides of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl and become more of a dough. This was so sticky, I didn't even pinch it because it was still quite, quite liquid. And I'll, again, I'll lift you up and let you see. You can see now that the dough is starting to pick up a bit on the dough hook and become a little more solid. So I'm gonna continue tapping in some more flour. I will scrape down my bowl. I'm gonna go ahead, that was an additional half cup. Let me scrape that down. You know, having the seven quart mixer bowl is, is great because you can make really large recipes, but sometimes you have to scrape your bowl a little bit. Let me just see how this looks now that I've scraped it. And it's definitely starting to change. So can you see how that dough is less wet looking and how it is starting to pick up the flour and incorporate it in the dough? It's still very, very soft, very elastic. Um, definitely will need more flour. And just from my experience, I'm gonna say another half cup, but we're gonna add it slowly. So I'm gonna let this mix around. I'm gonna continue to tap in flour a tablespoon about at a time. And then I will bring you back and show you what the dough looks like. And please excuse Frankie. He has been Hank Pank Frankie. He literally did Kitty Olympics half the night and he's been very verbal today. So I apologize in advance because you're probably gonna hear him talking. All right, stay tuned. Okay, let me show you what the dough now looks like. And that is five full cups of all-purpose flour. And the recipe actually says four to five cups. Again, because of the temperature in my house, the humidity in my house, this dough um, often takes even six cups for me. So you can see it is very sticky. Um, it's in no way a bread dough that could be kneaded or shaped. So I'm gonna go <laughs> wash my hands. I'm gonna continue to add flour and I will bring you back and show you what it looks like when it's ready. Okay, I wanna show you how the bread has changed and it's starting to gather up and travel up the dough hook. So we are getting closer to the appropriate texture and I've got a little bit of flour here, but when I pinch the dough, it's still sticky. So, and it's still kind of sticking to my fingers. You want your fingers to come away clean. So I'm gonna continue adding flour now just by the tablespoon. I have five and a half cups, but again, I'm telling you this so you don't panic <laughs> because when I kept adding flour, I'm like, oh, did I do something wrong with the recipe? Did I mismeasure? But it, it's just very dependent on temperature and humidity. So stay tuned, I'll bring you back when it's come together fully. Okay, as you see, our dough ball has come together completely. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to put the timer on for five minutes and I will bring you back after it's had a chance to knead. And as a reminder, 
Um, whether you have a KitchenAid, whatever type of mixer, check your manual because in KitchenAid, you should not operate the dough hook above a level two. So stay tuned. Well, our five minutes of kneading is up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my bowl, clean the dough off the hook, take the hook off. We'll set that over in the sink. And I apologize, because I always have a hard time getting my bowl off. Oh, hey, it came off easy today. <laughs> Some days I have good hand days and some days I have bad. So this is what our dough looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape this out onto the countertop. And I will share with you, having the right tools is really nice. These little plastic bowl scrapers are just marvelous to have. They really get the dough out of the bowl. It keeps it from getting under your fingernails so much. And I just put a couple drops of olive oil on my countertop. I do not use flour for kneading bread. I think it makes your bread drier and you don't want that. So your bread's gonna be a little sticky, a little bit, but not terribly sticky. So as you see, it's, um, oh, well, you know, I guess you're not seeing scooch over here, my tripod's sinking again. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to knead this dough a few times, and as you knead it, you'll see it becomes very smooth. This is my favorite part. And I will also share, you could do this totally by hand. With my arthritis, I just can't do that anymore. So I'm very thankful for my KitchenAid mixer. So, we've got a nice smooth ball. What you want to do is start rounding it and tucking it until you have actually a relatively smooth dough ball. So there you go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my mixer bowl, even though it still has some dough in it, Put a little bit of olive oil in it. I'm going to drop in my dough ball, spin it so that the bottom gets oiled, spin it again. After I flip it, I'm just making it look pretty, not a requirement. <laughs> and now we want to put it into a warm place. Now you may be saying, where is a warm place? with this polar vortex we've been having. So for me, I put mine in the oven with just the light on. It's just the perfect amount of heat. You know, any kind of drafts or cold will really inhibit your bread from rising. The other thing you wanna do is just take a bread towel or a thin towel. I actually, yes, ladies and gentlemen, gotta clean one out. <laughs> um, or a non-stained one, let me say, they're always clean. But you want to, wet this with hot water and wring it out good, cover your bowl. We're gonna put it into our warm place for 30 minutes and then I will bring it back to show you how it's risen. Well, our bread has risen. Look how big and happy it is. So now comes the fun part. This is my favorite part of making bread. Oh, my ring is stuck on my finger. <laughs> well, we'll just leave the ring on, okay. So I am going to put a little olive oil down on my counter and just smear that around. Now what you wanna do is you wanna let the air out of your bread. So I'm just punching it down and then I am going to turn it out onto my lightly oiled surface. And you can see the bowl stayed pretty clean. And now we're going to shape it. And y'all aren't in the right position. Here we go. So I'm just going to push this out and it's a very soft, easy to manipulate dough. I'm gonna push this out into a rectangle. Now, here's where the fun begins. There are so many things that you can do with this bread. If you wanna take a big cookie sheet, you can use this as a pizza crust. You can divide it in two, roll it into circles, make it into a pizza crust. 
Um, and it's quite tasty. It's very yeasty, delicious bread, very good on for a pizza. You can also take your rectangle, divide it into three equal parts, roll it up, and I will put a link to this down below in the description box. This is a baguette pan, and you'll notice it has holes. That helps your baguettes to be nice and crispy crunchy, so you can make baguettes, put everything, bagel, seasoning on top, sesame seeds, garlic, herbs, you can do about anything you want. But for today, we're going to make a loaf of French bread. So let me kind of clear off my mess here. And I am just going to put this on a plain old cookie sheet. I do have a silk pad. I'll leave a link. This is an Amazon basic silk pad. I've been extremely satisfied with. You can also use parchment paper if you don't have a silk pad. So that's not a requirement at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one end and I'm just going to roll up my bread into a nice long loaf. Now, pick it up and flip it because we have a seam and we have ends sticking out. So I'm going to tuck in my ends and then I am going to pinch my seams. Now, one thing I will tell you <laughs> is this bread has a tendency to have blowouts. So you do want to make sure that you get your seam as well pinched as possible. But I actually had a couple blowouts on my baguettes the first time I made them. And you know what? They tasted just fine with the blown out holes. Now you want to tuck your bread in so that it's nice and even, as you can see. And this should fit just fine on my cookie sheet. So I'm going to ah, bump my head on the countertop <laughs> or the cupboards. I'm going to lift it up and reshape it a little bit. Because you want your bread pretty, right? Now, you do want to put some vents in your bread. If you don't, you will definitely have big blowouts of the side because that steam will build up and want to escape. So, I will tell you, my lame is lame. <laughs> I actually ordered one from Amazon, but with this crazy weather, it has not arrived yet. And it is supposed to be here tomorrow. Now, occasionally you'll get a little piece of dry dough from your bowl. If you don't wash your bowl, that's all that was. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to make five cuts in your bread. So I'm going to do them on the diagonal. I'm going to start in the middle. And if you don't have a lame, you can use a sharp knife, like a bread knife or a steak knife but you want to cut through the surface of that dough, not only so it looks pretty, but so that it vents the bread appropriately. So I'm just gonna cut through, and like I said, my lame is lame. In fact, I might go grab a steak knife gonna pull off that piece of dough. Let me do that. Oh yeah. So, proof that works. But you do wanna cut through that surface of the bread. So I'm doing five cuts, fairly evenly spaced. And I'm being a little fussy, but to me, that's the fun part of making the bread is making it pretty, doing your designs, taking your time. So once we get our bread in the oven, I'm gonna give you a little update. I know we haven't, I haven't done much except make bread on this video, but I wanted to get this cooking because I have a lot to do today. And I took yesterday off and put a little note in the community tab so y'all would know I didn't 
fall in a hole or get buried in a snowbank, I simply needed a break and I'll share a little bit more about that. So next you wanna take an egg and about a teaspoon of water. Beat that together really well. <coughs> then with a pastry brush, I'm gonna coat the bread. Now, some of you may be allergic to eggs or not like eggs. I never knew this. And I got this from Heather over at the Needy Homesteader. You can use sugar water to make that lovely golden brown, um, crispy, crunchy outside to your bread. So, tip for you. And of course, you gotta slop some all <laughs> over your silk pad because that's what makes cooking fun is making a mess. And I do go down into the little grooves that I made as well because we want those to get brown. And I will clean up this cookie tray before I put it in the oven. Now, once we've got it all coated, you want to bake this. The uh, Heather's recipe says 20 to 25 minutes. I can tell by looking at this that this is probably going to take closer to 30. You can whack the bread, like funk the bread, and if it sounds hollow, then you'll know it's done. So that's my plan. I've shared before, my oven's kind of slow, so I'm not convinced that it will get done in 25 minutes. My baguettes did, so I was kind of surprised at that. So yes, I'll clean this cookie sheet up, but how pretty is this bread? So we're gonna put this in the oven at 425. I'll come back in a moment just to chat. Well, I thought I would bring you in the dining room for our little chat because I just have a few updates I wanted to share with you while our delicious bread is baking. So um, I hope it's bright enough because I don't, I'm not using my ring light. And it's a beautiful sunny day finally here in Ohio. I actually have visual of my driveway. Ugh, that was really bad. I had super deep ice and compacted snow where I had driven over it before I got um, the big eight inches, which they finally tried to scoop out, but by then we had so much sleet it was impossible. Anyway, today I am working on packaging some of my beautiful gardener's hand soap for the subscription box. So I just have 83 bars <laughs> to package. Thankfully, I have all the hand bombs done, but I will be cleaning up the soap and then shrink wrapping it. So that's going to take me a few hours. I did want to thank you all for your orders. I just feel so blessed and so honored with all the compliments that I've gotten um, from people who have received their orders and been delighted. And, and so to each of you, I thank you, even if you just watched the video. One comment I've had, so I wanted to bring this up, is, gosh, I wish I canned because I really like the canning mat and mitt. So while I'm calling it that, the mitt is just a double-ended hot mitt. It is great for canning, but it's also great for taking even cookie sheets out of the oven, um, a casserole, anything where you need two hot mitts, it's perfect for that. So it's not unique to canning. The canning mats, if you don't can and you don't have any real use for an insulated mat, I can make those with two layers of cotton batting inside. And the reason I would use cotton batting versus the Insulbrite is because Insulbrite is polyester and therefore it's not absorbent, but they make great dish drying mats because it's two layers of 100% cotton fabric and would be two layers of cotton batting, machine washable. Um, so th that is an option. So if you don't can and you would still like to have a cute mat for your kitchen, please send me an email at sweethoneybath at gmail.com. I also have gotten some new fabrics. So because I don't want to monopolize my teaching videos, if you will, with information about fabric or canning mats or mitts or dish drying mitts or whatever, um, I'm gonna make a separate video, very short, just to show you what I have on hand. Um, because I do have some new patterns that y'all are going to just love. I just adore uh, fabric shopping. So um, now that COVID has finally come down in my area, thank the Lord, 
I've been able to get out a little bit and it's been really nice. I did not realize how confined I felt until I could actually get out. And we're still not out of the woods here yet, but my particular area just had such a surge of COVID for a very small town. And it's because we have a huge private university in town that has a greater student population than the population of our town. So with kids gathering, going home out of state and bringing it back, <clears throat> we really had an outbreak here in my little town. So I I know that my videos, like I had five last week and it's not Tuesday, <laughs> hopefully this will be up today. But but let me just share with you, you know, with, with having a soap business, with sewing, with caring for my mother, um, with life, <laughs> with some ups and downs and how I feel. I promise you I will always bring you videos on a weekly basis unless there's a catastrophe, but they may not always be on consistent days, so you'll just have to watch your news feed. So this one isn't going to go up until Tuesday. I have to wait for the bread to cool, and I'm hoping to do then a separate video to show you how to turn our bread, our French bread, into a French bread pizza. Now, I can't do them back to back today because I have orders that I have to finish and get to the post office today and lots of soap to package that I've put off a little bit. So if you can't wait to cut your bread, my suggestion would be cut your loaf in half and you can use that second half to make French bread pizza from. So you can still enjoy fresh bread for dinner and have a pizza later on if you wanna try both or you could bake two loaves. Um, just being me, uh, two loaves makes too, too much chem, so I have to be careful about doing that, but I am gonna make some French bread pizza. Pizza is my absolute favorite food if I've never shared that with you. So I'm starting to smell delicious homemade bread. I will bring you back shortly and we'll finish talking about our bread and see how it came out. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Look. So here is our beautiful Italian bread loaf. Now, I'm gonna show you the truth of what happens, guys. So I had a little blowout on the back, <laughs> but actually that's where the seam was. So I'm going to make lemonade out of the lemons, and I'm gonna use that as my cutting line when I cut this in half uh, horizontally to make our French bread pizza. So I hope you will give this a try. It is such a simple and very delicious bread, very versatile. You can even portion it out and make dinner rolls. There's just so many applications. And because it uses regular flour and not unusual ingredients, I think most of you will have it on hand. So you'll notice I finally did change from Valentine's Day, seeing as how that was like, I don't know, 10 days ago. And I realize I still have my red covers up, so I'm probably gonna have to change those back to gray for um, since Valentine's is over. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, you know, the one down there, and then ring the bell and select all to be notified of all the new videos. Welcome again to all of our new members. Thank you to all of my loyal subscribers. I so appreciate and just enjoy each and every one of you. I love receiving emails and communications from you. Keep those coming. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button. And I will see you all later this week with our French bread pizza. Be well, be healthy, be blessed. And I'll see you all later this week. Take care.